All right. So if your parents are you are between the ages of, let's call it uh, 39, 40 to probably mid fifties, and you're worried about the Freak Nick documentary, this is the camera from that period. This is the Canon XL1S, a video handheld camcorder that was used heavily during the late 90s, during that time period of Freak Nick, for the people who like had a little money and was really trying to get some good video, this is what they had. So if your mama nervous about the Freak Nick video, this is what this is what she remembers seeing. Somebody had one of these, they were walking around, hey yo, what you doing for it? With the with the beat in the trunk and well we've grown since then. We have grown. As a person who attended Freak Nick, I, I'm a I'm a God fearing a uh, member of the church and an avid voter in the community. We don't do things like that anymore. But this camera though, was from that time period. Uh, it was state of the art for the time period. And the, the tricky part was, how do you get this to work today? Like, I can't even go out, and I don't have a mini DV player. Um, the plastic is so old, it's sticky. But I wanted to like take it and kind of see what type of video footage I could get in today's time period with this camera. And the only way to get this to be able to shoot today was to use a mini RCA to HDMI converter and then attach it to my Atomos Ninja to do the recording. And at that point, we basically are taking a live feed from the camera and then encoding it with the Ninja. And that's how you get your resolution, which is somewhere around um, 720p. So it's not great, but you can make these work today. You know, you see it in some of the test footage uh, it's, it's not full HD, but for that time period, it was really, really advanced. I mean, this has a built-in onboard uh, boom. You had exchangeable lenses you could do on this camera. The one I have on here is a 5.5 millimeter to 88 millimeter, 88 millimeter, uh, a 5.5 millimeter to 88 millimeter, which is a great range if you're gonna be in Freak Nick videotaping, booty shaking. Right now, it's called twerking. Back then, mid, late 90s, it was called booty shake. And if you ever listen to some good old booty shake music, Luke, Two Live Crew, uh, the song of an era, the, the, the music of an era. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video because I had this laying around from one of my friends and uh, the goal was how do you get it to record again? And then I see this information about the Freak Nick documentary and I'm like, Ha ha ha, that's the story. This is the one. This is the camera that was used for a lot of people doing free nick who could afford it to get some of the footage you're gonna see on the documentary. Ooh. Yeah. So here's some footage from the Canon XL S1 set up in the exact same spot as I was with my uh, Sony a7 IV. You can kind of see, you know, same lighting, same everything, kind of what type of image you can get out of it being recorded into the uh, Animos, being recorded <laughs> into the Animos, I don't know what just happened. I'm assuming they kept recording, but this is some sample footage being recorded to the Animos Ninja 5. I'm going to move faster because I don't know how long this is going to last. All right, let's jump right into it. Luckily, as I, during that time period, I was passing out water and pamphlets on uh, changing your life. I wasn't any of those heathens being heathenistic in the heathen streets. I was a good boy. It freaking Nick at four in the morning. Anyway, that's another story. But the, again, this is just a quick kind of recap of this camera and what it takes to get it working today. And if you can find one in good condition, it might even be cool to pull together, uh, to get in and pull together some content with it. Because again, it gives you a certain look. It's very nostalgic. Um, the tricky part is that because these are so old and depending on how they were stored, again, some of the plastic pieces may be difficult to touch because the, the, the plastics are starting to decompose and so they become very, very sticky and I, I hadn't found a way around that. But on this one, everything seemed to work well. I mean, the, the mic, well, I didn't actually use the onboard mic, but from a visual standpoint, uh, I plugged batteries into it. The batteries worked. Um, the video I, the video out obviously works because I was able to record 
uh, the video from it and it produced an image and um, you know so if you find one go ahead and try it out all right thank you for watching this quick clip about one of the cameras that changed the Freaknik era um, if you can find one try it out if you want to see more content please like and subscribe uh, tell a friend to tell a friend that this is what they need to watch out for before we had all the mirrorless cameras and phones and all that you knew when you were being recorded and then this is a smaller one some of the big VHS camcorders massive shoulder rigs that you'll pull up to a van and man they didn't care they'll put on a show but that's it this need to hear no day thank you for watching have a great day